Hey everybody, today I'm talking about Adventureland by Haber Games. Um, now this is a two to four player game. It's a family weight game, so it's not overly complex, but there's enough going on in it. Um, and for more kind of experienced or knowledgeable board gamers, then um, there's gonna be two names assigned to this game that's gonna really pique your interest because this is a game by Wolfgang Kramer and Michael Kiesling, who are absolutely you know, renowned and exalted um, board game designers. Everybody kind of loves their games. They've made huge hits um, and just uh, just overly, overall kind of really respected board gamers. Um, this game, um, as you can tell, it's got a pretty generic theme and a generic name. It's, it's a basic fantasy game where you are collecting weapons, um, collecting gold, trying to fight monsters to score points. Um, the game is kind of based on this grid system where you have this, I think it's an 11 by 11 grid and um, with all this different kind of fantastical landscape with castles and um, forestry and mountains and fog um, and you are navigating your kind of adventurers around this grid to collect these things, fight monsters and so on. Um, the game comes with three unique scenarios which kind of can kind of tinker the, the weight of the game or the complexity of the game to your needs. Um, you've got a very simple idea, a, a concept where you're just basically trying to get points by collecting stuff and fighting monsters. But you've got the more kind of advanced ones where it kind of throws in a bit of area control and kind of add a bit more weight to your decisions. Um, so this game is pretty um, unique in its concept. There's not really much like it I can think out there where you have um, five, or I think it's ten workers in total, um, five on a horizontal axis and five on the kind of vertical axis. Um, and your turn is going to consist of um, drawing a couple of cards um, and each of those cards has a grid reference on which obviously corresponds to the main board which is going to be where you're going to place um, either the, the certain types of items such as the gold, the swords, the herbs which kind of boost your fighting ability or the monsters themselves or even more adventurers that you can kind of collect on your travels and help you fight. Um, but yeah, every round you're going to draw a couple of these cards and place them on the board and then you're going to move either one of your workers um, anywhere on a kind of um, a right and um, downwards kind of um, movement method to either collect one of those items or you can move two workers um, or two adventurers one space each in that method. So the idea is that you can always go right and down but you can never go left and up. So you're always going to be going from the top left hand corner to the bottom right hand corner. Um, and the idea of that is that you can never go back on yourself and you've got to really weigh up your decisions of when you're going to go for something um, and sacrifice maybe doing something else before that point. So it's all about going, um, you know, getting into places before other players do, you know, trying to fight those monsters that give you victory points. Um, you're collecting the swords, which kind of give you um, dice, which or, or give the opportunity to roll dice when you fight a monster. And then you can um, basically bolster your fighting ability by spending those herbs. Um, and again, the, the monsters have victory points assigned to them. Some of them are harder to beat than others, but obviously you get um, victory points based on that. Um, and the, the more complex scenarios have this kind of area control uh, method where at the end of the game, if you don't have your adventurers in the castle areas, then you're going to score negative points based on um, every worker who's not inside a castle and um, based on the monster count, but also um, you are trying to score points or, or get the majority of your people in these castle areas to score an area majority kind of bonus because you're going to score a point for every kind of square that castle covers um, or if you're in second place you're going to score half of that or if in third place you're going to score half of that again. So a pretty simple um, a pretty simple area control kind of method that goes into it. But it's actually extremely, um, you know, every decision has a lot of weight to it because Every decision has a sacrifice and almost kind of a pushy luck style mentality to it or a chicken style mentality to it because um, you can't dilly dally too much and just hope to mop up loads of things by slowly going down the board but not only because other players are going to snatch everything before you do if you do that um, and fight all the monsters before you do and get to the good kind of castle spots before you do but also because the actual player deck of cards that you, that you burn through goes pretty quickly so if you take too long and you're too slow then you're actually going to get completely caught off guard and just stranded out in the you know in the mainland and just lose a lot of points um that way um most of this most of this review is catered to that third scenario which uses the area control which i think is going to be 
the the most replayable scenario. I think the other two versions are, are very much a, an introductory version of how to introduce this to kids or something like that. But if you do play that third scenario, um, this is definitely enough going on in this to, um, to engage more experienced gamers because as I said, the decisions are very meaningful um, and you're gonna find yourself pretty much um, you know, stressed for ideas on what you're gonna do each round because as I said, you wanna get into those castle spots because only one person can have them. And you know, if you're too slow, they're gonna get taken. Um, you know, if people go and uh, grab all the swords before you do, then you're not gonna have a chance to fight the monsters. Um, which is going to be where a lot of your points come from. Um, you've got to be careful about, um, you know, if you want to get the gold, which kind of gives you pure points, you've got to be careful about staying there too long because there's a monster that kind of pops up around the board and can take your workers off the board and kind of lose you moving opportunities. Um, you've got to be careful about grabbing those um, kind of companions you can get because not only do the companions kind of bolster your fighting ability, they also bolster your, bolster your chance of, um, you know, your area majority scoring opportunities because you can have multiple kind of worker or, or influence in an area only covering one square where normally you can only have one worker in one square. So there's a lot going on here and just that, that tension of not being able to go back on yourself and how far, when to push and when, um, who's, you know, which one of your workers are you going to leave behind, which ones you're going to kind of just completely rush forward with. Um, you've got to be, make sure you're well equipped enough to fight the monsters and obviously there's a there's a luck factor in fighting the monsters because you are rolling dice essentially, but there's so much mitigation in this where, you know, if you want to roll three dice, just make sure you have a load of swords. Some of the swords have additional kind of bonuses to them. Um, you want to collect all the herbs because they give you pretty much solid fighting power, varying, I think, from one all the way up to, th up to four, which can be extremely powerful. Um, and yeah, so there's, there's a lot of things you want to collect. Um, and just a lot, a lot of every turn is meaningful, which is what you want for a game like this. In terms of, you know, in terms of the mechanism itself, it's so simple. Just draw a couple of cards and um, move one worker as far as you want in that method, or move two workers once, and that's literally it. Um, so, in terms of yeah, explaining it, it is so so simple. But when you find it's your turn, it's not so simple at all because you really are, um, you know. You want to do everything, but you can't because you're going to constantly get frustrated because people are going to keep jumping ahead of you. Um, so really, really nice that way. You know, such a simple concept, but with deep, meaningful decisions every single turn. Um, so time investment as well. I mean, the game takes probably about half an hour to play, um, maybe a bit more, but um, it, it's more than proportionate. It's such an engaging game for that amount of time. And you know the deck does burn through pretty quickly because when you draw a monster tile, um, it doesn't kind of count towards your the cards that you draw each round. So, and also um, the game actually ends as well when all the adventurers are gone and all the swords are gone as well, which can happen um, quite a significant period of time before the actual deck runs out itself. So sometimes it can end even quicker than you think it will. Um, uptime is really good. I mean, in terms of turns are very quick. Um, the only kind of thing that may slightly halt play is that every round you are drawing two cards and sometimes that can take as long as the turn itself but that's part of the fun because you can actually anticipate where these items are going to pop up by going to certain spaces that you know haven't come out yet um, and just standing there because if an item comes out when you're already there you automatically get the item so you can set yourself up in that way by standing in you know lucrative positions um, you've got to be you know You've got to make sure you're strong enough to fight the monsters but you don't want to take too long because somebody will kill it before you and there's kind of bonuses you're going to get for killing the most monsters or having the most gold um yeah so there's, there's again there's a lot to think about in a very simple game and um, replayability wise um i think as i said this one the third scenario um is the way to go in terms of replayability the other two i think are, again very introductory methods but as a framework i think the game has a lot of scope in terms of different things that people could do with it. Maybe, I'm sure there are um, kind of online, online scenarios, kind of fan-made scenarios about about the game or that, that use the game's mechanisms. But I would love to see more scenarios actually, or official scenarios being introduced to this one because don't get me wrong, that, that, that the game has a decent amount of replayability in what it offers in the, in the core box alone, but I'd just like to see a little bit more, um, you know, or just kind of really be imaginative and think outside the box on what this game can do because there is a lot there to be explored. Um, and you can just see why, or how well this game is designed and the influence of the two experienced designers who um, just know how to make 
beautifully streamlined but engaging games that um, constantly leave you thinking and racking your brains about what you're going to do next. And aesthetically, it's, it, the board itself actually looks fantastic. I love the way that the, the, the grid reference actually associate with all different kind of terrain types. So, you know, the, the area of castles, you know, there might be, it covers like four um, squares on the grid, but it just looks seamless in terms of the actual art itself. It just looks really cool. And um, all the different kind of castle sizes and stuff, which obviously um, determine the points for the area of influence is great. Um, I love the, the way that the board design is um, actually kind of mechanically as well is very clever because the most lucrative position is that huge castle in the bottom right hand corner of the board. But as the game develops, um, there's going to be pretty much a wall of monsters that kind of, um, you know, develop as the game goes on. And um, you're going to be pretty much shut out of that castle unless you fight monsters. So um, there's that great idea there where you're going to have to fight monsters in order to get to the big castles. And um, you can't jump over monsters as well, so it's not something you can ignore. Um, component quality is really good. Um, nice nice quality components in terms of the card stock and stuff like that. Artwork, um, other than, you know, the the board itself is pretty generic. You know, the swords are generic looking, the, the monsters are very generic looking, and um, the gold and stuff. And, you know, you can probably see by the game name and the title itself, it's extremely generic and pretty boring, to be honest, in terms of the way it sounds and if you're explaining it to someone. But the, the gameplay itself completely overrides that. And um, it's almost like, there's almost a missed opportunity to take it a little step higher by just adding a little bit more, I don't know, just a little bit of that X factor in terms of presenting it. Um, but still, I, I, that, the game does completely transcend that. Um, and setup and teardown time is pretty easy as well. Once you've got all the components out, you're just drawing eight cards out to um, set up the board initially, and then you're good to go. Um, the game really does develop as, a, as it goes on because you, you'll find that the board is completely flooded with items and and you're gonna to have to really be careful about what you're gonna pick. Um, the game scales really well too. I mean, I think it probably works best at probably three to four players. Um, two players though, it does work, it does work absolutely fine. Um, and if I had to compare this to anything else, I really don't know what I would because, I mean, I guess there's a lot of those kind of games that use that time track mechanism where you can go as far as you want, but you can never go back. And this does sort of correlate to that, but in terms of being able to go down as far as you want on the board, but never be it never being able to go back on yourself. Um, and that is just such a, a fundamental, visceral um, decision to make on you know what you're gonna sacrifice in relation to what you're gonna gain. But yeah, overall, this game is um, it's really good fun. I mean, Haber makes some really good games. I mean, most of their games are for kids, but their family weight games are really good too. I mean, um, you know, Karuba is another solid game I really enjoy by Haber. Um, and this one does kind of have that, have that kind of simple, introductory feel to it but it's not you know it's not painting by numbers it's not like the game plays you in a lot of these kids style or, or family weight style games you know the decisions are there there are really some hard brain racking things to do and um, you know it's all about timing and seizing the opportunity when you can and um, it's a very engaging game I think this was um, nominated for one of the Spiel Awards um, many years ago but um, and you can completely see why. Um, yeah, the only thing for me that might stop people investing so much into it is that it does look so generic. But give it a try. Um, you know, these designers have been around for a, so long and they know how to put a great game together. And this is another one of those. So um, it gets a very good verdict from me. Um, I've really enjoyed this one recently and um, I'm looking forward to playing it more and more. So that is Adventure Land by Wolfgang Kramer and Michael Kiesling. Um, definitely check this one out. Uh, if you have enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe to the channel and check out my other videos too. Uh, for everyone else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye.